subscribe. Hi folks, I want to share with you today a video. It's actually a few videos. I'm going to make probably three in this series um, on how I photograph the Coraline picture that you saw in the beginning of the video here. Um, and I broke it up into three because otherwise it's just going to be a really long video. And, and I think people appreciate more shorter videos um, and they can watch the one they want. You know, and so that's kind of the way I'm going to do it. But anyway... Uh, the video is about the 55-gallon drums and how I decorated and painted them, um, which is pretty cool. My buddy Rob, uh, and I'll link him in the description of the video uh, for Facebook and Instagram, he has a 3D printer and he creates, you know, 55-gallon drums and gas cylinders and masks and faces and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for some great props, uh, check him out. Um, but the barrels come like you see here, blank black barrels. Um, some come with, you know, sealed up uh, with non-removable lids. And then one of them that I have comes with a removable lid. Uh, and they're really super detailed um, with the rings and the caps and everything. But anyway, what I do initially is uh, I go on Pinterest or Google and I do a search of whatever signage that I want. And then I'll just, you know, right click and save. Uh, and then I'll scale it in Photoshop depending on how big or small I want the sign to be. I'll print them out and I'll cut them just like you saw there. Uh, you know, I'm being lazy here. Usually I use a little paintbrush, <laughs> but I had a popsicle stick, so that's what I did. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I measured between the two rings here and I've got a size placard that uh, will fit between those two for the radio uh, radioactive drum. And... I'll just apply the uh, super tacky glue to the uh, printed paper and just press it on. Now, something to note about, depending on the type of paper that you use, you know, there's different types of printer paper. You can get a coated kind. You can get a matte kind. You can get photo paper kind. Um, be careful with the glue that you don't put too much on and cause whatever paper you're using. If it's a thin paper like this one here, it could wilt and um, wrinkle and saturate the placard. Um, and you don't want that. And then make the ink like run together from the backside. So avoid that. Just use a really light amount of glue. You can also use spray adhesive. But these placards here are so small that if I used spray adhesive, I would most likely get all my fingernails and fingertips painted in spray adhesive more than I would the placard itself. Uh, <laughs> I know because I've done it. So anyway... Um, this uh, placard here, like I say, it's going on top. And this one here has the removable lid. Really cool. Full of detail. You know, um, it's got, like I say, the rings and the caps. How a 55-gallon drum wouldn't have it. And it's just really cool. So these next placards that I'm doing, these 1203 placards, um, they're a larger size intentionally because I want them to, when I apply them to the barrel, I want them to apply over the rings of the barrel, much like they would in real life. Uh, you know, when you see these barrels with these big placards on there, they're a sticker when it's on a barrel and the sticker doesn't always fit right in between the rim. It goes over the rings. So uh, that's what I wanted to do here. Um, and, you know, so I'll go through the same process. I'll just cut these out with my X-Acto knife um, and, you know, get them all put in a little pile. And uh, here I do have some spray adhesive on the table, but I didn't, uh, I used it. But there was really no point to use it because I was going to put glue also. And what, you know, once you put the glue on there, it just makes the spray adhesive, you know, not effective. So what I did is I just lightly painted uh, in the basic shape of the placard, making sure to get the top and bottom of each ring. Uh, because I'm going to press that placard on there uh, and I need it to seat tied up against the ring and so there has to be glue there uh you'll see right here see i'll put it right there on the ring on the top and bottom um and i got a little bit of more glue on here than i need and so i will brush some of that off because i don't want it to wilt and and make my placard uh, ink you know on the placard uh, printed paper run and so small paint brushes are pretty handy for this uh you know and so here i press on the ring itself of the placard where the placard is underneath and then I press on the bottom one uh, and you can see what that does it just presses the 
the um, shape of the ring through. Now I'll take my popsicle stick and I'll just rock it back and forth, rock it back and forth on the ring. And that gives me, you know, a really firm, tight seating of the placard against uh, the ring and the shape of the ring really shows through the metal, uh, not the metal print, <laughs> the paper print. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and and so and that's kind of what I do to to make that happen. You know, alternately you could probably use the end of a fine paintbrush. You can use you know whatever, but a popsicle stick is pretty handy. And you can also flip the popsicle stick up on its side to do it, or you can lay it flat like this. Whatever it works, just so long as you get that really tight seal. A really tight seat against the ring and that definition of the ring shows through the uh, printed paper it's just what you're after you know wipe away any excess glue uh, and you can see these barrels come totally black um, you can paint them now I found I tried acrylic paints but I just really didn't like the way that it worked the rattle cam paints really really uh, decorate these up nicely uh, you know I tried paint pens um, I just didn't like those you know, uh, tools as much. You might like them. In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint them with the rattle can. And so it just was a lot faster uh, and easier to do with the rattle can. Um, and, uh, you know, then I put some dangerous uh, radioactive placards on there. You know, you put whatever you want on these cans. But being that this was the Coraline radioactive shoot, we went with hazmat stuff. 1203 and radioactive. Um, you know, but look here, just a really nice fitting of that printed product a uh, printed piece of paper on the uh, 3d print uh, 3d printed barrel you know so and there's a little bit of uh you know texture to the uh placard there and that's okay you know it's not a big deal you know i could have used a little bit less glue but in the end you're not going to see it it's not going to matter uh so here we are we're going to paint these now, you might ask, well, why did you not paint them before you put the placard on them? Well, part of the reason I did that was because I want the rust, you know, by the time I'm done painting it, I want them to look like rusty and, you know, uh, just different textured, uh, you know, pitting and things on the outside of the can. So I wanted to put, I wanted that to go uh, over the edges of the placard, the paint uh, that I'm using to create that effect. I, I wanted it to you know, to go over the edges of the placard a little bit so it looked more realistic. Um, I didn't spray directly over the placard with the paint, but I missed it around the edges of it and stuff you'll see here. And that thing that I did where I banged on the top of the nozzle, instead of just shooting, you know, pressing down and holding it, that gives you these little bursts of, uh, you know, little um, blobs of ink that shoot out and, and it just breaks up the pattern of the paint. You can go back and forth between tapping it on top like that, kind of stippling the paint. Uh, and then you can go back and forth uh, with a regular long press of the, the, the nozzle on the paint can from a distance to create a finer uh, mist, uh, a finer droplet as it falls onto the paint can. So you can get, you know, multi-layered in size of droplets that fall on the, the barrel to give it a more realistic look. Um, now, I'm sure that there, and, and there are, there are people who do this fantastic expertly, okay, um, all, all over YouTube. You know, I'm just showing you the way that I do it, uh, and, you know, it works for me, and, you know, uh, it will work for you, you know. Um, I'm not wanting to go out and buy airbrushes and compressors to paint my barrels and things like that. <laughs> I just, I don't have time for that. This works perfectly, and you see in the picture it makes an awesome effect. So, you know, I just go back and forth between the uh, stippling with the uh, tapping on top and a nice fine mist like you see here, you know, and it gives me, like I say, a really varied droplet that creates the, the effect of texture and rust and pitting and things like that. Got a little bit of wind here today, so I got to kind of spray, you know, <laughs> into the wind, but... <laughs> But uh, Home Depot does not sponsor this photo, and in no way am I intending to show uh, anything about Home Depot. But, let me just say that. Uh, but look at this droplet. See, see what I'm talking about? It creates a, a really varied uh, paint, painted surface. And see how the paint goes over the edge of the placard? It just looks a little bit more realistic to me than a hard-edged placard against a painted 
uh, surface. It just looks better to me. I mean, you could do it the other way if you want. Paint them first, put the placard on. Totally up to you. But I think that looks really good. Uh, and, you know, and and this is this this takes really no no skill. There's my dog in the back. Chloe! <laughs> anyway, we bring the containers back inside after they dry. Let you take a look at them. Uh, and I think they look really awesome. Now, another thing to note, the spray paint doesn't seem to have, or the propellant doesn't seem to have any effect on the 3D print. Um, like, you know, if you spray paint styrofoam, sometimes uh, if you're too close or you lay it on too heavy at once, you're going to get pitting and uh, distortion and warping and things like that. It's going to eat away at the foam. It doesn't seem to have that effect here on the barrels, which is nice because that would have been a bummer <laughs> when I had any barrels. <laughs> but but uh, these look really nice. And look at the detail. Rob prints these things great, man. Look at those lids. Look at that. You know, there's even texture in the actual print itself. Uh, I don't know how the 3D printing works, but there is an actual texture that you can feel on the barrel that's pretty cool. It's just an added little benefit. Once again, guys, like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Watch the next two videos in how I create uh, the final picture that you saw in the beginning of the video. And I'll link them in the descriptions and in the video. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. Subscribe.